Imagine a plane that holds almost 600 people. Imagine a plane with space for showers, shops, and bars. Imagine a plane that could change air travel forever. Right now, that dream is coming true. This is the inside story of a multi-billion pound gamble. A game of high stakes, high technology, big machines, gigantic buildings. The creation of an airliner bigger, more powerful, more luxurious than anything ever seen. The Airbus A380. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this, the 2003 Paris Air Show. It's a beautiful afternoon here at Le Bourget for what is the first day of... The Paris Air Show, France, June 2003. For people who build airliners, it's the most important event of the year. Far away from the sweating crowds and the spinning stunt planes, billion-pound deals are done by sober-suited businessmen. Men like Charles Champion. On his shoulders rests the fate of the company known as Airbus. What is at stake, I would say, with such a program is basically the future of, uh, of the company. As such. Really? Really. Two companies dominate the market. On the European side is Airbus. And there's the American giant, Boeing. The two have been locked in a deadly battle for over 30 years. Now Airbus want to overshadow Boeing's entire product range and build a machine that will make the legendary 747, the jumbo jet, obsolete. Broughton, North Wales, November 2003. It's 6.30 a.m. Inside this brand new factory, Simon Shingler and his team are about to venture into the unknown. I don't want anyone to get complacent. We need to make sure we're concentrating on what we're doing. Else there will be a light wheel, we'll bend something or hurt someone. We can't afford for that. Over the last five months, more than 350 engineers have been working day and night constructing the world's largest airliner wing. One hundred and nineteen feet long, it's been painstakingly built up, lying on its back edge. It looks more like a ship than part of a plane. High-capacity, radio-controlled cranes are used to maneuver the components into position. Today is the day they lift the complete wing free of its supporting framework and get the chance to see the entire, enormous structure for the first time. The whole idea of having you all here is to make sure that you're all concentrating on your one specific station. Right? And that's how we're going to ensure that we're going to take this wing out without anyone hurting themselves or without the components getting damaged. The wing, although longer and heavier than two articulated lorries parked end to end, is made to a tolerance of less than half a millimeter. To damage it now would be a disaster. Everybody gets very excited and it's easy to, uh, to sort of leave one of the attachments in place or part of the tooling because there's so many attachments around the periphery of the wing. If that happens then it's uh, it causes damage when it's being lifted. Lifting 30 tons of aluminium and carbon fiber is not a task to be taken lightly. When we're lifting this wing out, make sure all the, all the mobile phones are turned off. Building the world's biggest wing 
is the latest milestone in the short but eventful history of the company. It all started back in the 60s when Spain, Britain, France and Germany joined forces to compete with the might of Boeing. The first Airbus took off on the 28th of October 1972 and since then the range has expanded dramatically. You can now have an Airbus in many different sizes, from a compact 100-seater right up to the longest commercial airliner flying today, the 380-seat A340-600. The nerve center of the company is in the city of Toulouse in southwestern France. From here, Charles Champion controls nearly £6 billion worth of high-tech investment. If he fails to deliver the plane on time, it could be the end of Airbus. The buck really does stop with him. Airbus is riding on this, yes, definitely. Building such an aircraft, it's a bit like climbing a mountain. Yeah? You see the mountain in the distance, it looks you know, high but not too high. And you start walking and you've got the first, uh, first level and then you say, whoo, this one was hard. And you've got the next one, it's even harder. And, and so you just see the summit, it's getting closer. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot to walk and uh, a lot to climb. This business is not just about building airliners, it's about selling them first. And to do that, Airbus has built this giant showroom. The building contains full-scale demonstrators of each of its planes. In pride of place is the A380. John Leahy's worked for Airbus for 20 years. Now's his biggest challenge. To convince the airlines they should be spending a lot of money on a plane that is yet to fly. Why would you want to spend $265 million for something like this? Because it'll do something no other airplane in the world can do. And that's bring people 8,000 nautical miles in a level of comfort that's never been provided before. The purpose of all this is to whet the appetite of people such as Sir Richard Branson, head of Virgin Atlantic. I mean, I know that, you know, the people He's agreed to buy six planes based on assurances that they'll set new standards in performance and efficiency. It's incredible, isn't it? Oh dear. There are a lot of challenges when you're building a brand new aeroplane. Um, but, you know, Airbus are a very, very professional company. And, you know, we would not be buying planes from Airbus if we didn't feel that we could trust them to deliver. Airbus are now facing an almighty challenge if they are to keep the promises they've made. We've done it before. We've been there. We know how to deliver, and we will this time as well. It might sound easy, but in reality, it's anything but. To build giant planes, first you need giant buildings. And since 2001, vast new factories have been springing up all over Europe. The UK wing factory took two years to build. The foundations go down 105 feet to support the massive assembly machinery. But Britain contains only part of the operation. 500 miles to the east in Germany, just outside Hamburg, another massive facility has been built on land reclaimed from the nearby River Elbe. This is where some of the huge fuselage sections will be assembled, stitched together from parts made all over the world. There are also factories near Paris, two in western France, and also in south and central Spain. All are gearing up for the new giant. It's a truly global effort, with tens of thousands of people involved. It's big, it's really big. You name it and the people are working on it. So at the end of the day, it's almost impossible to count the number of people working on this project.